After four years, I finally reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, creating 100 videos in a process. Do you want to know which my favorite project is? It's no-brainer, it's this one, Arduino Word Clock. I was really pleased with the way this 3D printed case turned out. Also, the LED matrix built out of LED strips worked perfectly. And writing the code for this device was an absolute blast. The only thing I could improve on was connectivity of electronic components. Since I want all you to share in my experience, I decided to give this project a fresh look. Making the clock smaller and perfecting it to get the final product that you can proudly display on your desk. The original clock was using a large matrix built out of LED strips. Let's scale it down and try to use this small 8x8 LED matrix module. I will also add time setup functionality which the original project didn't have. If you want to join me in creating this electronic project from scratch, experiencing all the ups and downs along the way, stick around. In terms of components and connectivity, the smaller world clock is no different from the large one. We require an Arduino Nano and LED matrix. However, here is where things become much easier. Instead of constructing the matrix from LED strips, we will utilize an 8x8 WS2812 LED matrix. We power the matrix from the Arduino, connecting the data input pin to Arduino Digital Pin 10. Next we have the small RTC module, which is the I2C device. To integrate it, we need to connect it to the Arduino via the I2C bus. This bus has data and clock lines connected to Arduino pins A4 and A5 respectively. The RTC module is powered from Arduino. Its SDA pin connects to the data line and the SCL pin connects to the clock line of the I2C bus. To be able to introduce time setup functionality, we need few more components. An OLED display, which also connects to the I2C bus, and three push buttons connected to digital pins D2, D3 and D4. The last component required is micro USB breakout board, which we'll use to power this clock device. The next step is to create the design of the custom PCB board based on the schematic. My preferred tool for this task is Fritzing. I have previously created a tutorial on this subject. If you're not familiar with Fritzing, please take a moment to check it out. Here you can see both the top and bottom layers of the PCB design. Now I need to transition this project to the actual PCB. And thanks to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, this is made possible. PCBWay is your premier choice for PCB manufacturing and assembly. In their website you can effortlessly upload Gerber files created by Fritzing. Your design is then picked up, thoroughly checked and sent for manufacturing. After the PCB is produced, all connections are meticulously reviewed. Once the quality checks are passed, your order is hermetically sealed, packaged and dispatched to you. And that's precisely what I did. I uploaded my PCP design in Gerber format and shortly after the package was on its way from China. And here it is. It arrived around Christmas, adding a festive touch. How nice. I will read it off screen as after all this is a private correspondence. And these are my PCBs. Nicely packaged. Let's get them out. They look great, right? The idea here is that LED matrix will nicely plug in on one side of this PCB board. On the other side we will solder all the other necessary components. Starting with Arduino Nano, this compact version of RTC module DS3231. OLED display. Three push buttons. And micro USB socket that I will use to power this clock. Actually, I will not permanently solder these components, I would rather use these male and female header pins so I can slot all components in with the option of unplugging them later for use in other projects. Ok, so let's start putting this device together. First we will solder female header pins for Arduino. 
Next are the three push buttons. Darn! While mounting the buttons I realize I made a mistake in my design. The buttons were meant to be connected to Arduino pins D2 to D4 and instead they are connected to pins from D3 through D5. Not a big deal, you might say. You can just slightly adjust code later on. However, I was relying on using two available interrupts linked to digital pin D2 and D3. Now I'm left with just one. So I won't be able to program the buttons in the most optimal way. It's not a disaster. There are many ways to solve this problem. But as you can imagine, I'm not happy. Well, it is what it is. I cannot undo the mistake. So let's carry on with mounting the components. The push buttons are done. And now it's time to add header pins for the OLED display. Next we will solder the male header pins for the RTC module and the pins for connecting the micro USB socket. For mounting of the matrix I have printed these distances. They will help me to position the matrix while soldering the pins to ensure it is properly aligned and parallel with the PCB board. Now that all the header pins are in place, we can plug in the rest of the components. Arduino Nano, RTC module, OLED display, and finally, the micro USB socket. Let's power up this device and perform a few tests to check if all individual components are properly connected. We'll begin with I2C devices. The OLED display and RTC module. I will use the I2C scanner program, which you can get from the internet, to verify if both components are detected by Arduino as connected to the I2C bus. Let's load the code and we have a problem. Only the OLED display is detected. I recognize the address from my previous projects. RTC module is not visible. Let's take a closer look at the design to identify the issue. I have double checked the design multiple times. I thought it was bulletproof. Clearly it was not. Can you see the problem? In making some last minute corrections, I must have deleted the 5 volt connection powering the RTC module but also LED matrix. The good news is that I can easily fix it by adding a wire connection. And there it is. So, I ordered two layer PCB board, but now I have unintentionally ended up with three layer one. Having top layer, the bottom layer, and I am so useless layer. Let's reconnect the matrix, power up the device and run the scanner again. The problem is fixed. We now have both devices reported as expected. Now that we can communicate with OLED display, we can use it as a status monitor. Here is a simple program I wrote that reacts to three push buttons. The link to this test sketch along with others will be included in the video description below. Let's give it a try. All buttons are reacting fine. One test down. Two more to go. Here is another simple test program that reads time from the RTC module and displays it on the OLED display. Let's see if this works. Fantastic. The last test would be to run a demo program from the FastLED library to ensure the matrix works fine. Before we run it we need to make two small corrections. The matrix we use is connected to digital pin 10, not D5, and the demo should run not for 50 but for 64 LEDs. Loading. Looks great. Looks even better with the diffusion panel. With this successful test, we can assume that this device is properly checked. 
all components work fine, giving me high level of confidence that I will be able to complete this project successfully. However, this video is already 10 minutes long, so I suggest we stop here. This video was about hardware part of this project. In the next one, I'll concentrate on adjusting and improving the code of the original word clock project, adding the time setup functionality and working on a 3D printed case for this clock. If you're interested how this project is going to turn out, stay tuned to my channel, subscribe to it, ring the bell to get notified when the second part of this video will be available. Thank you very much for watching this video and other videos of mine. Special thanks to my ever-growing number of patrons and channel members. And finally, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Before I go, a quick spoiler alert. I have loaded the code of the original project onto my new device and it worked. So it's looking promising. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!